Hello and welcome to this how-to video covering subjects and predicates, specifically simple subjects and complete subjects, simple predicates and complete predicates. Let's get started. Sentence number one, the party for Victor is tomorrow. Now we know that sentences are made up of two parts, the complete subject and the complete predicate. So let's start there. Uh, I like to start with predicate because I think it's easier to find the verb in a sentence. So in sentence number one, our verb is is and so our complete predicate is going to be is tomorrow because the word tomorrow is modifying is so that is our complete predicate let's do a double underline for that double underline and we know that our simple predicate or our verb is the word is because is is always a verb so that leaves the rest of the sentence the party for victor and if it's all left over then it has to be the complete subject because it's everything left uh, what is tomorrow? The party. So that is our simple subject. Okay, that sentence was relatively easy. Let's try another one. Number two, the soundtrack of that movie features several jazz standards. All right, so we're going to look for our verb first. It's going to be features. That's the action of this sentence. And it features several jazz standards. Um, yes, my underlining game is weak. So we're going to double underline that, and uh, our simple predicate or our verb is features. That leaves the rest of the sentence to be our complete subject, so let's underline all that once. Now, of that movie is a prepositional phrase, and remember that the simple subject cannot be inside of a prepositional phrase, so that means that soundtrack is our simple subject. All right, let's go to the next one. This one's tricky because it's a question, all right? Was every club in our school building a float for the parade? All right. So first we're going to look for our verb. And so if we look all the way across, building might be one, but it's a school building. So that's actually an object. So we're going to go with was. Was is our verb. Now, let's see if there's any other parts of this sentence that might be a part of that. Was every club um in our school building a float for the parade well let's see every club is actually going to be our subject uh, so our complete predicate the rest of it is going to be right here a float for the parade a float for the parade was is our verb and our subject is every club in our school building the subject of course being club so if we were to make this sentence just a regular statement, we'd say something like, every club in our school building was a float for the parade. So a lot of times when you've got a question, if you reverse it and just make it a normal sentence, that can make it easier than doing what I did, which is trying to look for the verb and all that as it's in its interrogative form, which is always a little bit irregular. Okay, let's look at the next one. Outside in the rain sits my bicycle, some toys, and a pair of pants. Okay, here's another example of an irregular sentence. Outside in the rain is saying where something is. It's a prepositional phrase. So we know that outside in the rain, none of that is going to be our subject. Sits, well, that's a verb because it's an action. All right, so we're going to put our V right over sits. My old bicycle, some toys, and a pair of pants. Since outside in the rain is telling where they sit, that's also going to be a part of our complete predicate. So let's go ahead and give that guy the double underline. And then what we've got left here is my old bicycle, some toys, and a pair of pants. Now, this is an example of a compound subject. There are multiple things sitting outside in the rain. So look, let's look at what's sitting outside in the rain. First, we're going to underline this whole section because this is going to be our simple subject since it's not part of our, sorry, not simple subject it's our complete subject and since it's not part of our complete predicate we're going to give it one underline now we're looking for the subject what's sitting outside in the rain well bicycle is my is not my is just telling us which bicycle old is telling us what the bicycle is like some is telling us how many toys so toys is also going to be a subject and is our conjunction a is an indefinite article pair of pants now this is tricky okay if I was to ask you what's sitting outside, you might say bicycle, toys, and pants. But that would be incorrect because of pants is a prepositional phrase. That means pants is the object of a preposition. It can't be the subject. So technically right here, the subject is pair. So what's sitting outside in the rain? My old bicycle, some toys, and a pair of pants. Bicycle, toys, pair. That's our compound subject. It's also a simple subject. 
Let's go to number five. Neither of these answers is correct. Okay, here's another sentence that has a prepositional phrase right in the middle, which might confuse you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and block that bad boy out. Okay, of these answers is a prepositional phrase. Is correct. That's going to be our complete predicate. Is, of course, is the verb. You know why? Because is is always a verb. Okay, that leaves us with neither of these answers to be our complete subject. And since of these answers is a prepositional phrase, answers cannot be our simple subject. So the simple subject here is neither. All right, so when you're looking for complete subjects, simple subjects, complete predicates, or simple predicates, the best thing you can do is look at the whole sentence, break it down into the complete subject, the complete predicate, and then within those sections, identify the subjects and verbs. You want to watch out for these questions. Okay, questions are a little bit confusing. You also want to look out for irregular sentences like this, and you definitely want to look out for these prepositional phrases because they can do a lot of damage to you trying to figure out what's going on in the sentence. So keep your eyes out for those, and if you have any more questions, don't hesitate to ask Mr. Whitley for help.